Here we go. Let me try it again. Maybe this is a little better. We've got a lot of wind going on around here, and sometimes that hurts the internet. So thanks for hanging in there with me. Gobble, gobble, who is that? Mr. Turkey, big and fat. He is big and fat, and he gobble, gobble, gobbles. He spreads his tail, and he wobble, wobble, wobbles. But when Thanksgiving Day is here, then it's our turn to gobble, 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 gobble. And I hope you were able to gobble up lots of good activities for November today. I've got some fun things that your children will enjoy, and I've also got some great ideas to tie in with your standards. And you know that great word, rigor. Uh, you can even make rigor fun. So um, let me show you a few little finger plays to get started. Show me Mr. Turkey and show me Mr. Duck. Put them behind your back. And whenever I do a finger play with children, I always prompt them, you know, to get them ready because the finger plays are so short. Mr. Turkey went for a walk one day in the very best of weather. He met Mr. Duck along the way, and they talked together. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Quack, quack, quack. Goodbye, goodbye. And they both walked back. And there's something about musical, about the language in that. The children absolutely love it. It's just, it's a really good um, little chant. Um, oh, a handshake that's really good for November. You have the children hold up their palm as wide as they can. Those are the turkey's feathers. And then, teacher, you make a fist with your uh, hand and stick out your thumb so it looks like the turkey's body. And then you put your turkey head and body next to the children's feathers. And you look at each other and you go gobble, 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 gobble. And that's a great handshake for November. Um, some books for November. Um, this one is made out of paper plates and the children could cut out pictures of foods they like to eat or write stories about foods that they like to eat. Another good book to make for November is made from some holiday or seasonal napkins. And if you just cut paper the size of the napkin and staple it in here, you'll have a great little book that they could write about things that they're thankful for or foods they like to eat. And these books, this is a rabbit trap. If you make this for a child, they are going to want to write in it. They're going to want to read it. And more importantly, they'll want to take it home and share it with their families. And we want children to talk about school at home. And especially those children who don't have books in the home. What a great way to send this home. And then this is one I'm actually going to do this with my granddaughter's class when I visit them the uh, Tuesday before Thanksgiving. It's a Thanksgiving journal and you fold a couple sheets of white paper in construction paper, punch holes, and then I've got a rubber band that I stuck through one end and put the top of the fork between the rubber band, that loop, and then the other end of the rubber band goes through the other hole. Um, I've got more directions about this on my, on my website and on my blog, so you can learn a little bit more how to do this. But I thought this would be a really good journal for the children to take home and write about their Thanksgiving holidays. Now, um, I'm sorry the internet kind of got messed up, and so some of you didn't get to hear my Timmy turkey story, so I'll um, share that with you again. So this is made out of a file folder, and it's one of those stories that children will beg to hear again and again and again, and it's, it's so good for oral language. I mean, I've done this with, you know, two, three, and four-year-olds, and I've done this with first and second graders, and they all love it. So one day, Timmy turkey went walking down the road, and he heard, ha, 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 he, 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 you're the funniest turkey I ever did see. And Timmy Turkey said, oh dear, oh dear, oh me, oh me, why am I the funniest turkey you ever did see? Well, said the bluebird, you should be blue like me. Blue is such a nice, peaceful color. So Timmy Turkey went home, and he dyed himself blue. The next day, he went walking down the road, and he heard, would you say it with me, please? Ha, 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 he, 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 you're the funniest turkey I ever did see. And Timmy Turkey said, oh dear, oh dear, oh me, oh me, why am I the funniest turkey you ever did see? Well, said the red bird, you should be red like me. Red's such a happy gay color. 
So Timmy Turkey went home and dyed himself red and encouraged the children to, you know, join in and, and do the different chants with you. And then he becomes green after he meets the frog and then yellow and then purple after he sees a parrot. And finally, Timmy Turkey goes home and he goes, I've dyed myself all these colors and nobody likes me. And then he had a great idea. He thought, mmm, I'm going to do something really special. And he got all the different colors of dye. And the next day, he went walking down the road. And all the friends said, ha, 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 he, 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 you're the most beautiful turkey we ever did see. And to this day, that's why turkeys have all the beautiful colors. Now, when you make this, um, if you just cut the turkey shape out of the front of the file folder and just pull the colors out. But the cool thing is to write the words on the back, glue the words on the back. And so it looks like you know the story and you're just reading it off the back. But this is one you could tell every day in November. When I heard this story over 40 years ago, the last part was where grandmother said, oh, Timmy, don't worry. I'm going to make you a nice Thinksgiving color everybody would like. And um, in that story, you pulled out a roasted turkey that was roasted brown. But I thought that was a little too graphic for kids, so I changed it a little bit. And you know what? That's what's nice about being teachers. You can change. You can do anything you want. You take anything I give you, you adapt it, change it, make it work for you. Now, this is another Thanksgiving activity that I've been doing for years, and um, my daughter wrote this poem, and um, a lot of you have done this. It's a Thanksgiving story bracelet, and it's just a wonderful way to do recall, a uh, wonderful thing that children can take home and share with their families. The only thing is... Um, it takes a little bit of effort to collect your beads ahead of time. What I found is that um, at Walmart, they sell a big plastic container with all the colors. The only color that they don't have in that big container is brown, and so I just bought some separate little brown beads. This might be a good activity if you had a parent helper to let them purchase the beads and come in and, and do this with the children. But I'll tell you how it goes. So they all take a pipe cleaner. The pilgrims set sail from far away on ships with tall white sails. You put on a white bead. They sailed many days across the ocean blue. The seas were rough, but the ship came through. At last they spotted land so green. They were so happy they cheered and screamed. The first year was very hard and black. Many died and wished that they could go back. But the Native Americans gave them a hand and helped them survive in this strange new land. They decided to celebrate in a special way, and that became our first Thanksgiving day. They had yellow corn they learned to grow, and orange pumpkin pie, don't you know? Red canned berries that they had found, and turkeys that they roasted brown. But before they ate any turkey or dressing, they all held hands for a Thanksgiving blessing. And at this point, you um, bend the pipe cleaner into a bracelet, and they have a neat little Thanksgiving bracelet they can take home. Um, I wanted to share a few of my November songs. This one, Veterans Day. It's, it's just, it's, I think it's beautiful. Today's the day we celebrate our veterans. The men and women who fought for our great land. We'll raise our flags and hold a moment of silence. And we will carry poppies in our As many times as I've sung this song, I still have a hard time getting through it without tears in my eyes. But it's just such a special time just to stop and, and be grateful 
for all the people who have served our country. And um, we've got some ideas in our November happies for um, maybe inviting veterans in your community in or maybe having a bulletin board where children put the name of the veterans and their family. So that is a uh, great song for November. And then I have to do Albuquerque turkey, so I'll lighten it up a little bit with Albuquerque turkey. Albuquerque is the turkey, and he's feathered, and he's fun, and he wobbles, and he gobbles, and he's absolutely mine. He's the best pet you can get, better than a dog or cat. He's my Albuquerque turkey. And I'm awfully proud of that. Albuquerque is a turkey, and he's happy in his bed. Cause for our Thanksgiving dinner, we'll have pizza pie instead. Isn't that fun? Kids love it. I've got some other good uh, songs for November, um, and just some of my favorite ones. We did a lot of uh, food songs from keeping with Thanksgiving. Peanut butter, and there's a book that you can download that goes with that. Today is Sunday, Sunday chicken, and we've got a book that goes with that. And got some, the color ant farm, and then we've got some other little downloadable books that the children can finish and write in. So, um, I like to do theme things, and you'll find a lot of theme things in our monthly happies. And by the way, um, starting November 1st on my website, you can download the November happy preview free. So that's like 18 pages of free activities that you can download. And then um, if you're interested, there is also, this is like a huge, uh, it's heavy. Carolyn uh, has 197 pages in the November Happy. So it's just packed with good stuff. Um, and there's 21 songs and 197 pages of great ideas and activities. And you can order that anytime. So I want to show you a few other things. Um, I, I like this. These are um, letter vests. <coughs> and so... Carolyn's got the patterns for these, but what's nice about these is each child can take a letter and they can cut out pictures or decorate it with things and then they can wear these letter vests when you sing songs and stand up or they can put them together and make words and different things like that. But I think anytime the children make something, there's ownership there and they get a lot more excited about being involved. Um, another thing that you'll find, um, some different ways uh, to, to practice different skills you're working on. Purposeful practice for automaticity. That's so important. It's plain old repetition, but um, it's something that we need to do for the skills that we want children to master. And so Carolyn's got a list of all these different fun ways that you can do things. Um, like, um, with, for, for example, counting. You're working on counting to 10 or by 10s to 100, whatever it is. Um, they can pull one of these little cards and take a turn. So divide children into groups and one person says one number and the next person says another one. Um, there's one for the turtle where you go very slow and one for underwater. And there's just, you know, all sorts of fun ways that you can practice counting and reading and reading the words on the word wall. And so um, what Carolyn suggests is you use these at school and then you send home a different version each night with a child and they can do it with their families. And wouldn't that, this one be fun for Christmas, um, the Santa version. So after each 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, they get to go, ho, 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 ho. Um, and... <coughs> These are just simple little things that you can tie in your classroom. I know an old lady who swallowed a one. She said it was fun to swallow a one. She's just begun. 
I know an old lady who swallowed it too. So the children could make these and they could sing that song, but you could also use these for other math activities like what is one more than three? What number comes between seven and nine? I had eight cookies, I ate two. How many do I have left? Addition, subtraction. You can do a lot of fun things with this little old lady. We also have a toolkit, a reader's toolkit. So um, there's a little wrap, the tools, the tools, the tools of good readers, and the children repeat, the tools, the tools, the tools of good readers. Look, look, look at the picture. Look, look, look at the picture, the tools, the tools, the tools of good readers. And so um, we want them, to, we want to empower them to realize, you know, if you come to words you don't know, we've been working on these tools. And you could take one tool at a time and really focus on it. And then the children could make their toolbox and they get to put that tool in and then make the sound of the letters. They can put that tool and go back and read it again and look for a smaller chunk. So if you model these different strategies, practice them, have them in the reader's toolbox, and when they come to a word they don't know, you can say, well, get out your toolbox. You've got the tools you need. Uh, uh, we've got a game this month, Stinky Cheese. I think most of y'all seen me do this Stinky Cheese game. I just love it. The kids love it. Um, there's also a version with Stinky Socks that you might enjoy. Um, and then I really liked um, one of Carolyn's ideas um, called Circle Talks. <clears throat> and what you do is you can just um, use any topic. I kind of like the idea of making some little prompt cards. And um, so you've, let's say you've got two minutes before lunch, you sit in a circle and the word is living and you go around the circle and every child names something that is living. Or you could do this with um, a vocabulary word, grateful, and everybody says something that they're grateful for. You could do it with a rhyming word. You could do it with a letter. You could do it with a, a geometric shape. But if you had just like a little ring of uh, talk prompts, uh, it's just really good for concept development and for language and, and a great thing to do if you've got two or three minutes. You might also use this to line children up that were getting ready to go to PE um, name something you're grateful for, or name something that's a sphere, and then they can get in line. Um, but I like the idea of having uh, some prompt cards to help you. And if you tied in this with the supervisor of the day, <coughs> and every day um, you have a different word or letter, whatever you're working on, and you put it on the visor, and the supervisor of the day wears this, and they don't let their friends in and out the door until they say something um, when you leave the classroom. Uh, but th this is a good example. These are good examples of intentional teaching. Um, so you've got some word or sound or whatever that we're focusing on today, and then you've also got that purposeful practice for automaticity because you're going to use it repeatedly, and you've also got active learning because the children are involved. They're not just, you know, typing a key. They're actually thinking and speaking and, and saying different things. So, um, gosh, thank you for joining me. I, I hope you got at least one new idea. If you got one new idea, put your thumb up next to your chest. And I'm going to give you a few cheers. The pencil char sharpener cheer. Show me your pencil sharpener. Show me your pencil. Bzzz. You're sharp. And then reach up and grab a star and put it in your heart before, because you're so special. And I will close with a little song. Um, every packet of happies, we have um, a good morning song and we have attention grabbers and um, you know, like this one has 21 different songs, but um, we also have a goodbye song. And somebody once said, you know, teaching is um, when like uh, having dessert and an, uh, an appetizer and a dessert. If you start your day with a song, that's your appetizer. And if you end your day with a song, that's a dessert. It doesn't really matter what goes on in between. Um, but, it, but it always is good to end with a song and it just, it'll make you feel better and make the children feel better. In fact, one teacher said um, they can have a horrible day, but they always end the day by holding hands and they sing a song and sway back and forth. So here's our goodbye song for November. 
special, special, special me. I'm as special as can be. There is no one quite like me. I'm as good as I can be. Special, special, special me. I'm as special as can be. Special, special, special you. I am special, you are too. Thank you all for joining me. I'm as grateful as can be. Special, special, special you. Happy November to each of you. Take care. God bless. Have a good evening.